Rumors and misinformation are still swirling about hydroxychloroquine, and the retraction of a recent study has only added fuel to the flames. We covered that study here when it was published, and some of you had questions once it was retracted. So now we're back to talk about it and what it means to the bigger picture. That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. A few weeks ago, we covered some of the latest data on hydroxychloroquine. We specifically mentioned a couple recent studies, including one that concluded that patients given the drug not only received no benefit, but may have been at increased risk of harm with reduced in-hospital survival rates and disrupted heart rhythms. This study, published in The Lancet, had some big implications. Big enough that the World Health Organization paused the hydroxychloroquine arm of their solidarity clinical trial for COVID-19 treatments. It was published on May 22nd, retracted on June 4th at the request of the study's authors, who had developed serious concerns about their primary data source. Shortly after the study came out, questions began to arise about the integrity of the data and the way it had been analyzed. The authors had used a large database, compiled and analyzed by the company Surgisphere, which, upon further questioning, did not appear willing to provide the raw data to non-affiliated authors or even to explain how it had been sourced. Another recent study on the safety of blood pressure medications in individuals with COVID-19 has been retracted as well. It had been published in the New England Journal of Medicine and was also based on data from Surgisphere. While this certainly raises concerns over our ever-increasing use of large databases to answer specific questions, it doesn't raise much concern over whether we've overlooked hydroxychloroquine's utility in treated COVID-19, which continues to be investigated in combination with other drugs. The WHO has unpaused the hydroxychloroquine arm of its study since evidence of harm was based largely on the now-retracted Lancet paper. But there's still no good evidence for benefit. In the COVID news episode where we covered that paper, we highlighted another study that found no evidence of clinical benefit of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin in COVID-19 patients. On April 14th, the Center for Evidence-Based Medicine issued a detailed report on the current evidence and concluded that existing data do not support the claim that hydroxychloroquine is useful against the new coronavirus. Since then, the results of three large trials also appear to support this conclusion. One of these, a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial, published in the New England Journal of Medicine on June 3rd, concluded that hydroxychloroquine did not make a difference in the prevention or treatment of COVID-19. Some people have blamed their attractions on our attempts to move science along too quickly due to the pandemic. However, I can think of any number of studies in non-pandemic scientific history that made really big waves before being retracted. Other people are feeling mistrustful of science because of the retractions. We, on the other hand, find ourselves trusting science and scientists more because of them. Real problems arise when we do not retract studies based on evidence that they're faulty or when we place too much emphasis on one study among many that contradict it. Science isn't perfect. What matters is that we're ready to admit when it isn't so we can move on toward the right answer. That doesn't always happen, and we're always glad to see when it does. Hey, did you enjoyed this episode? You might enjoy last week's episode, which talked about the evidence behind remdesivir and its treatment of COVID-19. We'd also be really happy if you like and subscribe down below. And if you want, head on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help to support the show as we move through the pandemic and into the future. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Josh Gister, and Michael Chin, and of course, our surgeon, Amaral Sam.